Hello, I'm Matty Graham, Assistant Editor of Digital Photo Magazine, and I'd like to share a technique with you that will make more of your low-light, bokeh-rich portraits. In this tutorial, we're going to be using Lightroom, but the techniques can also be applied in Adobe Camera Raw software. So, let's take a look at our image, which is called Christmas.dng, that can be found in the Start Images folder. It's a cute, candlelit portrait, full of festive atmosphere, but because it was taken at a high ISO, and in low light, there's some simple steps that can be taken to make the most of the pixels. In fact, you can transform this into this. A vast improvement with balanced exposure and colour temperature, as well as a cleaner frame with the noise reduced. So, let's reset the changes and see how the image comes together. With the Christmas.dng from your Start Images folder, or your own image of course, open in Lightroom, the first task is to make sure the Develop module is selected as this is where we'll be making all our edits. Down the right hand side of the interface you'll see a number of sliders and the first one we need to locate is temperature as this will help us correct the colour balance in the frame. At the moment, because of the different light sources in the scene the image is a little too orange and a little too green. To cool the scene down, drag the slider to the left. Let's set ours around the 2800 mark. Now, we don't want to lose all the atmosphere from the image, so let's drag the tint slider right. Around plus 50 should be absolutely fine. It really warms up the scene. Shooting in difficult low light conditions will almost always require some adjustment to the exposure in processing, and that's certainly the case here. In Lightroom, the two important sliders to lighten your frame are exposure, that's here, which brightens or darkens the whole image, and shadows, which brightens the dark areas in your frame. Now remember that in some older versions of Lightroom, Shadows is called Fill Light. Using both sliders in combination gives a more balanced exposure increase, but it's important to remember not to push exposure levels too high, as this can compromise image quality, especially when the image was taken at a high ISO. So, for our example image, let's drag the slider to the right to increase the exposure to around... 0.80. And let's increase the shadows to plus 50. And you can see that's really brightened up the scene. Within the Develop module, scroll down to the Detail options, which groups together sharpening and noise reduction. But before making any changes, however, hover the mouse over the subject's face and click. This will magnify the area to a one-to-one -one zoom, giving you a close-up look at your pixels. Under the Noise Reduction options, locate the Color Slider. Drag this to the right until the multicolored speckling of the digital noise disappears. In our image, a setting of around 70 will do absolutely fine. With the speckling gone, it's time to fix the grain in the image, which is present because of the high ISO setting of 1600. In the noise reduction options, find the luminance slider. Drag this to the right and you'll notice the grain soften and decrease, but be careful though, drag it too far and your subject's skin will look porcelain and just a little bit wrong. A setting of around 30 should be fine for our image. Leave the luminance detail slider set to 50, but increase the contrast slider to 25. This will help prevent mottling. Now the noise in the image has been contained, it's time to sharpen the frame to make the most of the detail in the image. The sharpening options are just above the noise reduction options. The amount slider makes edges more defined as the slider is dragged to the right and its value increased. We only want to sharpen our image a little, so let's drag the amount slider to 30. The radius slider controls the size of the edges sharpened. Let's keep this at 1. Keep the detail slider low at 25 to evade the image suffering from artifacts. And lastly, increase the masking to 50. Remember, you can choose to avoid this step and instead sharpen the image in Photoshop or Elements, especially if you plan to edit the picture further. OK, so we're nearly there, but we're going to make a couple of more adjustments to really get the most from this frame. Hover the mouse back over the eyes and click to zoom back out and get a larger view of your picture. With portraits, adding a vignette can help focus the viewer's attention on the subject rather than other areas of the frame such as the background. Scroll down to the effects options and you can make a vignette in just a couple of seconds. You'll see the post crop vignetting option. Click on the style drop down menu and make sure highlight priority is set. Then drag the amount slider to the left. A setting of around 20 will be sufficient for our image. As a final touch, the subject's eyes can be brightened to enhance the catch lights in the pupils created by the LED candle lights. Scroll up to the top of the interface and you'll see a number of options just below the histogram. We want the one on the far right, which is Adjustment Brush. 
Click on it and you'll see a selection of adjustment options will be ready for you to use. Drag the mouse over the subject's face and you'll see it's been changed to a brush. You can change the size of this brush using the square bracket keys. Once you're happy with its size, simply paint over the subject's eyes. Head back over to the adjustment options and drag the exposure slider to the right. A setting of around 0.30 will be fine for this image. Once you're happy, just click done. So all you need to do now is export your file by clicking file, export, and saving it wherever you wish. We've gone from a start image with exposure problems and dodgy color balance to a polished portrait full of atmosphere and one you'll treasure all year round. Have fun with your portraits and I'll see you next time.